Hey Glam Fam, it's me, Lynn Wood, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to properly flat iron a head of hair, just like a professional. So I'm going to go ahead and start off just by brushing out this head of hair. I've got my Denman Pro brush here. You guys know how much I love my Denman paddle brush. It is fantastic. And I'm just going to start out by kind of brushing through, ensuring there are no knots or anything in the hair. Uh, this is a cut that one of our prior students did so I'm hoping that the cut looks uh, fantastic and if not then you know we'll make it look better with the style because <laughs> I'm not cutting it today so I'm just gonna go ahead and we're getting through just making sure that all the tangles are out because this baby here has been in a locker for quite some time she's been in what we call our orphanage so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by detangling that and then over here I have of course a rat tail comb I have a Babyliss Pro Porcelain Ceramic Flat Iron. Let me see if I can get a little closer so you guys can see there. Hold on, let me do the YouTuber thing here. Uh, there we go, okay. So, this is our Porcelain Ceramic Babyliss Pro Flat Iron. There's the Babyliss Pro portion, just in case anyone's wondering. Um, right now, I have it set to 345 degrees. I know a lot of times now these irons go up to like 450 degrees, but let's be real, that's extremely excessive for the amount of heat that you actually need. Of course, I have some uh, butterfly clips, and I also have on my wristband here, which I love these because they are easily sanitizable. You can interchange them between clients, they're really cheap, and they are a great place for me to store my duck bills, my uh, single prong clippies, things like that whenever I'm doing hairstyles. So. I'm going to start off just by sectioning off in the back of the head. I'm going to section off a pretty good sized section right here in the nape area from the occipital bone on down. So from here, I'm just going to separate this off. I'm going to go ahead and clip on this side. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Now for this remainder of the hair here, I'm going to go ahead and section off just with my fingers and then we're going to start using our duck bills there so that way it makes it easier for me to just drop a section and keep it moving and this cut is interesting so you guys will get to see some fun stuff okay so I'm gonna go ahead and move you guys a little bit closer so as I'm working out the details you can easily see what's going on alright so we're gonna start just by picking up a small section of hair and we're just gonna comb that hair out like so so once I've got it combed out, I'm gonna place my comb in the opposite side right here in my thumb. I'm picking up my flat iron. I'm just gonna lightly tap right at the scalp area. I know a lot of times when you're working on mannequins like this, it's easy to just take it to the scalp and just let it sit there. But keep in mind, a live client's scalp is going to uh, be very sensitive to heat. So you want to just lightly tap in that area just like that. It'll keep you from burning up their scalp. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and just place my comb right behind the iron. And that's what we call the chase method. And you can kind of see there, that's essentially how we get it nice and straight. Now, if you're doing that correctly and with small enough sections, you'll notice one pass will be plenty. This spot here, someone got a little happy with the heat. And this right here, if you guys can see that, is why we don't use 450 degrees of heat. Let me move her closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see here. This little section of hair right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. It is broken off, that part that's sticking out. That's from using too much heat on this baby. Someone must have picked up a curling iron and went to town and thought, you know what, let me see what happens if I put it on the devil's temperature and try to make it happen. So we're just gonna go in here at that nape area and I'm just gonna begin to flat iron there using my chase method. And we would just continue that process on up throughout the hair. So I'm just dropping a section, pinning it up, and from there I can quickly go through this head of hair just like so. Now if you want any type of curl to it, notice there's a slight bend to the hair as I'm putting it in there. That's all in the angle that you're holding that hair. So when we're working with it, we are looking for that bend to kind of uh, come into play just by the way that we hold the hair. So here's a straight on view. and a slight bend to the hair. That way you're not having to go back later and try to put uh, bumps and things like that in the hair. It's just really not necessary. 
So here, picking up another section, we're just going to continue this process and when we get up to the top, I'm going to add just a little bit more curl so that way you guys can kind of see the style in place. So usually if you're taking a small section, you usually want to do like half an inch sections at the scalp or smaller. The smaller the section is, the straighter that hair is going to be and the longer it's going to stay straight. Now you don't have to grip your iron extremely tight. This is just a simple uh, loose grip of the iron. And you'll notice even with 400 and, or 345 degrees of heat on this one, you are still getting a very nice smooth feel to the hair. And this is not honestly what I would consider like a high grade professional flat iron. This one is what I would consider like an entry level professional flat iron. It does a good job, but they make uh, another one by the same company that's a titanium plate. I'll link that in the description box below as well. Uh, and it gets you a much smoother, much straighter, much more silky uh, effect. But for this texture of hair, the ceramic blend works really nice. Uh, for more coarse textures, the titanium blend works really well. So a lot of times it's just about knowing what works best for what hair fabric. All right, so I'm gonna continue here and when I get up to the top, I'll go ahead and bring you guys back in. Okay, Glam Fam, so I went ahead and flipped over into a voiceover because at this point there was background noise, students were in the mix, all that type of stuff. So I want you guys to kind of see here, uh, because I am putting a bit more curl in the front, I'm actually turning that iron at more of a 90 degree angle, and I'll kind of show you on this next one exactly what I mean. But you're essentially going to be picking up that section of hair, uh, you're going to be taking that flat iron and placing it as you would normally, and then slowly as you're sliding down the shaft of the hair, turn that iron to about a 90 degree angle like so. That's gonna create a curl on the end of that hair. Now, once you do that, let that curl rest. See how I just dropped it? I'm not going to finger comb through it. I'm not going to comb through the comb. Just let it rest and cool. By doing so, it allows that curl to set in place so uh, your curls last a lot longer. This is a tip or a technique that we use a lot of times in salons to make your curls last longer so you're not needing so much product. It's just to could let that hair completely cool before you start messing with it. Now you'll notice if I want an even tighter curl, I'll go ahead and rotate more than 90 degrees. So it just depends on how much curl you're wanting. Um, this is more of what I would call a standard curl. Um, it gives kind of like a, a ribbon curl type look when I'm finished. So at this point, I've sped up the camera just because I kind of feel like, you know what, you've kind of seen this process and I don't want it to be overly long to watch or, you know, in any way arduous for you to watch at all. So we're just continuing this process and as I get further up, I'm going to be curling slightly tighter just to give even more emphasis to those layers up there. All right, and now we're just gonna repeat the same steps on the opposite side. Uh, let me move this camera around so you guys can see it from a different angle and move my lighting. So uh, hopefully you guys will be able to pick up even easier here. So we're just turning it and then let that curl drop and rest just like you saw me do there. We're just gonna continue that process all the way through the top. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see kind of how the layering and things are looking. It just gives a really nice placement and fall to that hair. Look at those curls, y'all. This is my signature look, by the way. Uh, and the finished look, you guys can kind of see here is after I finger comb through it. Um, I absolutely love the way that this falls. My clients absolutely love it as well when I do this technique on them. Um, and it's really nice because to me it works well on every hair texture. Now, I didn't finger comb through the back yet because I want you guys to see just how easy that is. It's literally just me dragging my fingers through the hair. <laughs> There's no trick or technique here. It's really all in the size of your sections, uh, how you're flat ironing, the proper temperature, all of that makes a big difference. Uh, if, of course, you guys would like a more detailed tutorial on how to curl hair with a flat iron, let me know in the comment box below and I will more than gladly show you guys in a more detailed video all the different techniques on how to curl hair with a flat iron. So let me know what you think of this in the comment box down below. And until next time, you guys, take care, God bless, and stay glam. You know I love you, boo.
Bye-bye.